Hey folks, I'm back doing another quick video. I just posted the Coil Love Secret Domain video and an array of things came to my attention. Uh, number one, I learned what happens when you post a video that has music in it. I found that out right away. I also discovered that the camera I've been using the last six months to do my videos sucks serious hind tit and I won't be using that anymore. I might in some instances, but for the most part, I won't. And, well, those are the two things I, I discovered. And also, I guess a distant third is, I'm going to talk about some an artist that I've been playing a lot of the last couple weeks. I've been obsessed with this release, and I've been listening to it on repeat. And I want to share it. And it's not a big artist. It's not a very popular artist. I hope, though, that those of you who watch all my Skinny Puppy videos, my Coil videos, my Depeche Mode videos, I hope you guys do watch this and check out some of Kuniyuki Takahashi's music. His music is absolutely gorgeous, and I've been obsessed with it for the past few weeks, this new release. I've liked him for well over a decade now, but his newest release is really phenomenal, and I hope you all check it out. So. Yeah, number one, I, I want to make it clear that when I make my YouTube videos, I don't watch them. I, I, I post them and I, I, um, I pretty much get them into the computer and I upload them to YouTube and then I'm done. I really don't re-watch them. I did this time with Coil Love Secret Domain because I, I heavily edited it. And I hope you guys watch it. Uh, it was fun editing it. And I will continue to edit my videos, but not to the extent I did with Love Secret Domain, and I'll explain why. As I was uploading the video, I, I realized that YouTube, when you upload it, they process it. And basically they have all these tools in place and technology in place to make sure that you're not infringing upon anyone's copyright. And obviously music is the big one. So. The, the video got uploaded and it said it didn't find any issues, which was cool, but it did also say that some of the music I uploaded was copyrighted. And and here, and here are the details that I learned that, that are very good to know. Um, you can post videos, any, anyone who's interested in doing videos, this would be interesting for you to know. You can post music in videos. It looks like you can post as much music as you want, as long as you want. There's no cutoff time, there are no time limits. You can post whatever song you want. However, if it is copyrighted and all music is, that gives YouTube the right to commercialize your video and you will not make a cent from it. So basically that Coil Love Secret Domain video YouTube reserves the right to throw some commercials and ads in there. So if you see ads in that video, you'll understand why. It's because it, when, it, when it processed the video, it, it found that I had uploaded Coil's The Snow, Coil's Window Pane, and Throbbing Gristle's Hot on the Heels of Love. And I did isolate those tracks and upload them, and it found those. It's interesting because I, up, I, I isolated two or three other tracks that it didn't catch. I don't know, maybe those songs aren't copyrighted in the same way, I don't know. But those three songs it caught, and because of that, it basically means that they can commercialize my video, and I can never make a cent from that commercialization. The money goes to the artists. And you know what, I don't really have a problem with that. I mean, I've never really, look to monetize this channel. I never thought it was a possibility. But if they, if, if YouTube chooses to do that, and they could, if that video were to get popular enough, I guess they could choose to monetize it. They could choose to commercialize it. And the money would go into the rights holders, which I assume is whoever the label is that owns that music. Um, maybe it's Wax Tracks, maybe it's the remaining members of Coil, maybe it's Chris and Cozy. Throbbing Gristle, I don't know. Um, but the money goes somewhere. It doesn't go to me, though. So, again, I don't have a problem with that, really. Like, I wouldn't be doing these videos if it weren't for these artists making this great music. But I do have a problem with the commercialization. I don't want a bunch of bullshit ads on my channel if I'm not making any money. So, 
What that basically means is from here on out, I will not be isolating music. Now, if you notice with the Coil Love Secret Domain video, I was playing music underneath me talking. Um, and I think I will continue to do that because I don't think it picks up on that. I'll find out here with this video because I'm going to do it in that video too. And I'm going to continue to post images and stuff. It is YouTube. I, I assume that's what people mainly want to see. They want to see videos and images and things. But I will not be isolating music anymore. I just, I, I'm not going to take that chance in, in YouTube monetizing my channel, not giving me any money for it. I'm not okay with that. I don't know that many people would be okay with that. I will, however, keep playing the music underneath me talking, and I'll keep it at a dull roar. You know, loud enough where you can kind of get a vibe of it, but not loud enough where it's going to be drowning out my voice. So anyway, yeah, I learned that. Uh, yeah, you can't you can't be posting music if you don't want to have ads. And I don't, you know, like I mentioned before, I don't mind. I guess if my channel got big enough, I wouldn't really mind having commercials. But I want to be making a little bit of money from that. I don't want to, I don't want my channel to be monetized only so people can advertise on my channel and then I don't see any of that money. No, that's not going to happen. So I'll keep the music at a dull roar and I'll keep doing the video, the image edits. I will do that. The other thing too is uh, I really apologize for the video quality. Up until about six months ago, I was using my iPhone. I have a newer iPhone within the past few years that I've been doing my videos on. And it's a really nice camera. It has a decent mic. It has, it's, a, it's a nice camera. I think it's an iPhone 12, okay? It's a nice camera. And it's a nice, it has a nice mic, and it's nice. About six months ago, I got a cheaper camera that I plug into my desktop. I don't have a laptop. I just plug this cheaper camera into my desktop so I could record my videos through Zoom. I like Zoom, it's easy to use, it has some cool features, you know, it's easy. But the camera I got's not very good, and the mic sucks. And I, you know, I, if I spend any time reviewing my videos, which I don't up till today, um, I would have noticed this. So I apologize for that, I will not be using that camera anymore, I will be going back to my iPhone so you can hear and see me. I was also noticing that, you know, super grainy the video you can hardly see me or anything not that that's a bad not that that's you know who wants to be looking at my face for more than 10 seconds you know what i'm saying but it was still grainy you couldn't see anything so very blurry and then also the images are blurry i'm sure you guys see this i don't know what that's about maybe that's an iMovie thing i don't know the images on my end are clear as a bell when i'm editing but then when I put them into the video, they look like shit. So I'm only assuming maybe when I uploaded the video, I noticed um, it was only up to 480p or something. So it probably lowered the resolution on everything else that had a, had a more native, higher resolution. So with the iPhone, I think that problem will be fixed. Uh, no more grain, no more blur. It should be fine. So there's that. So anyway, I wanted to share that with you. Thanks for those of you who will be watching my coil video. I literally just did it. And I wanted to update everybody, letting them know that I apologize for the graininess of my present, my past six months of videos. Um, I won't be doing that again. And yeah, I won't be isolating songs. I will be playing songs underneath me talking, but no more isolating the song. It's just not, Again, if, if my channel is going to be monetized, I want to be making the monetization. I want to be making a little bit of scratch. Otherwise, I'm not okay with ads popping up, you guys being having to suffer through that, and not me not making any money. As, I, as I've always mentioned, it's not about money anyway, but if there are going to be ads on here, the money needs to come to me. I'm sure you guys will agree with that. Or Chris and Cozy, or Driving Gristle. If I knew the money was going to them, that would be cool. But I don't want to pay some stupid, shitty record company for my for my efforts. So anyway, there's that. A good 10 minutes of, of me rambling on about uh, my video setup. So I'm going to spend a few minutes. And right now, you're going to hear some music queuing up behind me. I'm going to put some music in. Can you hear it? Can you hear it? It's going. 
I want to talk about, and I, I am going to show these records because I just I just bought them a couple months ago and I just ripped them to digital, and they're they're sitting in front of me, so there's no reason to not show them. But I'm still going to show the images and um, talk about the music on them. But the artist is Kuniyuki Takahashi. This is the remix work sampler. This has three tracks on it, and then this is the album. This is remix works. Kuniyuki Takahashi, he's on Mule Music. He is a jack of all trades. He's an expert producer, remixer. He masters albums. He is one of those dudes who's been around for so long, he just doesn't know how to make bad music. He makes some pretty incredible stuff. And I have been obsessed with these releases recently. He, this one, this one again is called the Remix Work Sampler. This has three tracks on it, you can see them. And Kuniyuki is a real special, really special talent because he mixes all kinds of different vibes with his music. It's very unpredictable. I, I, I love this about him more than anything else, really. Every time you drop the needle down on one of his productions, you really don't have any idea where it's going. It could be house, it could be techno, it could be jazz, it could be world music, it could be folk, it could be ambient, it could be classical, it could be neoclassical. He's that talented. He really has a love of music. And any artist where you just cannot predict what he's or she is going to do at any given moment should be celebrated. And Kuniyuki is someone that should be celebrated. This remix here, has three remixes, Paul Randolph, Shake House, which is a house track. And I'll be playing that underneath my speaking right now. And the second track is his remix of Mariru. I wanna say Mariru. I don't know exactly how to say the name of that band, but the name of the track is Rera Sui. And then he remixes ETV Girls Choir's track, Sampo Tagami. Really amazing stuff. You get house, you get techno, you get classical, you get funk, you get fusion, you get jazz. You get it all on this one record, this three track record. Every song is inspiring stuff. Really amazing stuff. Highly recommended. These are all on Mule Music, by the way. And then Remix Works is the double album you see here has eight remixes on it. He remixes Plateau by Mouse on the Keys, Could You Be Me, Kathy Cozens, and Paul Randolph. I'm gonna try to say this, so forgive me, because I'm gonna mispronounce it. Uh, Danugnan Magni by Mr. Raul K, 13 minute fusion jazz house epic. He remixes Garuda by Kazumi Watanabe, and this song is amazing this Garuda remix. It is fantastic. I've been listening to it on repeat for the past two weeks. It's just so cool. He remixes Summer Party by Erika, Erika Nishi, Love Boat by Jungle by Night, Song with, Song with No Words by National, Notional, Fifth No. it looks like Fifth Notional, but it's with an S, so it's Sith Notional. And then my favorite remix on the whole package, Rees by Nabawa unbelievable stuff um, like I mentioned the remix of Garuda is like this bizarre kind of worldly ambient uh, woof. I mean you can't even put a name to it it's really unique stuff fantastic production unpredictable electronic magic it's that it's just so good his remix of Erika Nishi summer party is more of more of a straight ahead kind of house techno mix uh, mixed with pop it's a little of all those things it's really catchy really good great stuff his remix of love boat is more housey uh, uplifting house even but always kind of housed in this uh, grounded in jazz his remix of song with no words is more of a kind of an ambient thing it has a choir almost classical and his mix of Rees by Nabawa is unreal. Gorgeous, gorgeous classical, electronic classical vibes on this one. 
if you guys like anyone who likes Balearic music, and it is summertime, if you do, if you are familiar with Balearic music, you know it's summertime, and this is the time that you want to listen to this kind of music. This is the time to listen to it. Go out by a body of water on a nice, summery, sunny day and listen to this Kuriyuki Takahashi Remix Works compilation. You will not be disappointed. It is some really inspiring, gorgeous stuff. And anything by Kuniyuki you want to go out and find. He has a number of albums out there. He's been producing stuff for a couple of decades now. And he's just one of those masters. He never makes a song that's not worthy of listening. He's very unpredictable. You never quite know where he's going to go. But his productions are always well above the rest of the herd. He just has a very absurdly high quality. His level of quality is very high. Let me put it that way. Uh, an artist that I would compare him to who's, at, who's, on, who's released stuff on the same label is DJ Sprinkles. And I will definitely be doing a DJ Sprinkles video very soon. I absolutely will. DJ Sprinkles is someone that needs to be celebrated. Absolutely. You Sprinkles fans out there know what I'm talking about. But if I were to compare Kuniyuki to anybody, it would be Sprinkles. And you know that, you know, those of you who know Sprinkles know that that's about the highest compliment you could possibly give in the realm of electronic music. So, pick this up. Pick them both up, okay? They're both out there right now. In fact, um, I was just on Juno today, the website Juno, and they're very reasonably priced. This one's $11 and this one's $21. You can get both of these for $32 and it's absolutely worth it. It's some of the best, in fact, this is my release of the year so far. If any of you, I know I talk about a lot of classic music here, that's almost all I talk about. And I don't talk about a lot of new music because the ones that I've posted about that are concerned with new music, I, nobody watches them. I guess I kind of understand that. People like to sit and watch videos about bands and artists that they already know. I personally like to watch videos about bands I don't know, names I don't know. So I hope you guys take the time to watch this video and check out Kuniyuki Takahashi. Pick up anything you can by him, but his stuff tends to go out of print really quickly and it sells out quickly because his stuff is that good. He's one of those artists that if you don't snap up his stuff within a year or two, that his stuff goes sky high, it rockets in value. So get these Remix Works albums before they go nuclear in value, because they will. Everything he does goes, the value just goes through the roof, so you want to get it. Remix Works, Kuniyuki Takahashi, Mule Music, check them out and check them out those records they are fantastic okay so wrapping up I'm gonna be using this device my iPhone to make my videos from here on out I apologize for the wonky camera I'm, I'm gonna try to fill this up with as many images as I can so you don't have to deal with that um, but yeah and also yeah I'm, I'm not gonna be isolating as many songs I just yeah you, YouTube's not gonna be stealing my money they steal enough they, they're big enough they make enough money right they don't need to be taking the money out of the little guy. I don't. I don't see the. I don't see how that's a necessity for them. Like I mentioned earlier, if it, if I knew it went right to the artist, that would be one thing. But um, anyway, hopefully the music pumping in the background uh, w won't offend any of their monetization practices. I don't know. Maybe it will. But at any rate, until next time, Kuniyuki Takahashi peeps, check him out. He's the man. And I will talk to you soon. Later.